try to still remember me sinking beneath That place you call your memory Been the ghost, what could I ever be? Haunting You never needed it You never felt what I felt You don't hurt like I hurt No, I don't need your help I can sink by myself I can hate by myself I can live by myself I can love no one else I can be no, no I can't I think no one else could ever sing To the place I learned to go within That I learned to find comfort in Mass, mass, just like the rest Always behind but I'm doing my best Wasting my time cause I don't know what's next The scared doesn't even begin to describe it I try to deny it, the end is inside And I fight it with everything that's inside And I'm lost, I'm so lost, so Cause I can't face the moment with you Your words, they weigh me down, yeah and Your eyes are holding anger that you wanna lose, it. Yeah. Your eyes are screaming now Cause you cry and you get loud Never know what you say till it comes out And it's just too late to fix this now Does it feel good to you? Frustrated, I cry out, was no for you
We spent about a year and a half off of making any kind of music at all. You know, we were on hiatus. Then all of a sudden, everything just picked up out of nowhere. And we were all living our lives as if we were never going to do music again. Not not doing music again, but not, you know, pursue it as a career or, you know, pursue your dreams and everything that that entails. Better Moments was just a whirlwind of an experience. We went from not playing music together for the better part of a year and a half, then getting back in, getting signed, starting our early touring career. Better Moments was just the first step. It was just, hey, uh, now that you're back, you owe an album, so start writing. We stepped outside the box to write that one. Um, I think we made a lot of decisions just I don't know we pushed a lot of boundaries with that album and we strayed away from our comfort zone I wasn't around for better moments it was a pretty different experience for me from the rest of the guys writing thank you and goodbye and putting that album out kind of as our last hurrah at the time you know watching the band get back together and watching them grow through the better moments album cycle was really cool to watch from the outside. It was great to see the growth. There were organic numbers and organic fans there that didn't go away even after the band did. So as soon as the band started putting out more material, everything really, really picked up. I'm, I'm very proud of those and that, but also, you know, I think when we come into the picture now, what we've done with Distance and that, it's, there's a, there's a lot more like, power guitar in this record than you hear in better moments than that and I think it's more just intense and we, we use the word emotional a lot too and I think reminiscent of like big guitar sounding records that I listened to when I was really getting into guitar and that which is actually interesting because you think a lot of times as like bands like us progress through writing records they get softer and that so it's kind of cool to done like something not as hard and then come and done, do this and I think that's a really cool Thing that you'll see in this. I've always said that like like people who talk to me about uh, being a musician, you know, writing music and stuff like making a record of any kind is a snapshot of the you know the album cycle's duration, you know, for the band. Uh, it was really our first time doing an album with anybody besides like our team of people. And even though Better Moments is a very different sounding record than Thank You and Goodbye or Distance. It definitely pushed the band forward in ways that it hadn't gone before. This kind of rushed, very uncomfortable way of writing a record. Although we're proud of it in a lot of ways, there's just a lot about it that if I could go back to when we were deciding how we were doing that record, there would have just been a lot of things that we would have done different. You know, the reality is, is from a creative perspective, I think that we left a lot on the table. You know, going into distance, I think that those those two years for me, it put me and some of the guys in a, in a dark place. You know, maybe this not living up to your expectations, maybe it not working out exactly the way that you thought or that you hoped. You know, I was feeling like really numb as a person. I just remember going into the end of Better Moments album cycle. You know, we had we had planned out writing sessions and I purposefully went uh, early to, to one to, to talk to Mike and we both sat there and we were just like you know after this entire world whirlwind of a couple years although we had some amazing amazing times we went through a lot and we both said to each other I'm not happy at all I love this band and I'm not you know I'm not I'm not leaving it you've come this far but we're not happy we were right on the same page. We got together, we knew we weren't happy with what was what, what we had did with Better Moments. We knew that we weren't happy with the kind of direction that we were moving and we just felt like we weren't being honest anymore. When it came time to write this record, it became a very like, no, we're gonna do it this way. We're not gonna let anybody kind of dictate how we're going to sound. We're gonna do what makes us feel like Boys of Fall. And it's gonna make distance just sound so much more genuine. It was everything that I could have asked for when we were putting this record cycle together, and that's such a big contrast from Better Moments. And so that's that's kind of how the how the idea of distance was born, of just like we're purposefully making you know making conscious decisions creatively to make it more intense and more impactful.
writing process for us has always just been this very collaborative effort. It always kind of starts the same. You know, it'll start with Jake and I, and Jake will want the song to go in a certain direction. And based on that, we'll all start, you know, putting in our inspiration for that type of a sound. And really, we'll get through the first session and we'll get, you know, a basic structure of the song, the tone, the emotion. But then from there, it starts to get very collaborative. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. Either, you know, Jake will be like, I either want to write a, a heavy song or, you know, he'll kind of set the tone slow song, poppy song, heavy song, whatever. Whatever he's in the mood for that day. And Mike is the is the lord of structure. One of my greatest weaknesses as, as an artist is, is trying to uh, narrow options down. And Mike is really, really, really good at saying, okay, my gut is telling me to go in this direction, so this is where we're going. Mike drives the van. He drives the, the songwriting van. Jake tells us where we're going, Mike drives the van. Drawing similarities between this one and Thank You and Goodbye back in 2016, we kind of went back to those roots. Uh, we usually start the song with scratch guitars, kind of get a skeleton of an idea. Not for necessarily a full song, but me, Dan, and Mike meet for the most part and hash out guitars, and Mike will do some MIDI drums in the background so it doesn't just sound like shit. Shit, because it's bitch. Them. Basic bitch drums. We then send it over to Eli, or Mama, and Mama will basically tell us that we're bad and that he hates the song. If there is something that I would say at this is like, oh, I'm kind of thinking about this chord progression, but you know, and then I'll just, I'll just let the guys do their thing. From there, we'll all take it home, and that's when Foz will start putting some lyric ideas over it. That's when Mama will start putting some bass lines over it. We'll send it out for Dean, and he'll start doing some more drum things. And then, if I don't have leads, or even, actually a lot of times if I do have leads, I'll just start messing with stuff at home too, just so I have more time to think and breathe with it. And over the period of two weeks to a month for one for any given song. That will slowly come together and we'll just drop things in and it'll evolve into the first like full draft of something and then we'll kind of get real picky with the transitional elements or just I don't like this verse or I don't like this melody or just ch changing those parts and we all kind of, it's just a, a super collaborative process as soon as the initial skeletons are laid down. Obviously being away from the band after Thank You and Goodbye, I moved to Nashville. Always kept up with the guys throughout everything. Always took the chance to see them and you know host them if they were in town. You know, it, it wasn't odd for me to get a text from Mike or anything, but it was it was definitely not something I really expected. He said, Hey, we need to get this album finished and we're wondering if you want to write the drums for it. Kind of no-brainer, yeah. It was kind of, you know, the right situation at the right time. Being able to do everything remotely, you know, really bounce everything back and forth between the guys, you know, throughout the process. Made everything really easy, and it was in, you know, a matter of a few weeks, really. Boys of Fall, to me, especially with the sound on distance, is quintessential Boys of Fall. So the second I heard the songs, on first listen through, I could tell exactly what I wanted. After that, I really kind of set in on a producer role, both both Mike and I. I'll come in and make suggestions uh, based off of where my gut is telling us where to go. You know, the guys have said it before, but it really is just such a collaborative effort. And, and where I say that this writing cycle deviated from anything we've ever done is we were all collectively on the same page. I feel like nine times out of 10, if somebody made a suggestion, it took that it took that direction or at least it was it's heavily considered recorded heard out and then if we all hated it if it was oh okay you know you know what now that i hear it in the context of the song take it out now, this writing process was focused on a lot of goals of first of all making things much more emotional and that narrowed down some chord progressions we were going to use the contrast of of this uh this writing cycle was there that we didn't we didn't put that limit on ourselves with this uh, with with distance. We we put a limit on ourselves with better moments. And, and, and I think with distance, we, we took that ceiling off. Said you know what we're going to do we're going to write the songs to where they take us, and we're not going to dictate that. You know you're going to know it in your gut when it's ready. 
you know, we all just love writing music together. You know, Eli and I have been in this band for almost a decade now. As crazy as that is, it just goes to show how much like passion and love you can put into something and how much time you can spend doing it. You know, we're just very grateful to continue writing to this day and continue being able to put songs out and get this album together and, and you know, put together what was Distance. And, you know, without that collaborative effort, it just, it wouldn't be the same.
So self-producing, I would say it's been a cornerstone of our band since the very, very beginning. When this band first started, it was kind of a project for Mike to learn how to record. And the first demo that I heard of Boys of Fall was through a mutual friend that Mike and I had. I wasn't even a part of the project yet. And my first takeaway was, I mean, yeah, the song was, this is 2011, so the song was like, great for 2011 standards but the recording was amazing and like no local bands at that time had access to such high quality recording when it comes to self-producing like not that i don't appreciate an outside view but like i i trust that we're going to make what is most true to us it's for a lot of people self-producing is way different than the way they do things but for us it's it's the norm the way we self-produce and we write music is part of the reason we keep doing it. You know, as much as touring is important and our friendships are important, part of the things that we love doing together is the writing the music. And so that experience of producing an album with my four best friends is probably the most important thing because you're comfortable, you're not afraid to critique each other, you know, you'll say what's on your mind. We're all here to make sure that it's a mutually loved uh, piece of work at the end of the day and nobody's gonna have problems with it. You know, self-production has always been a big part since the beginning of the band, only because right before the band had gotten started, I officially went into recording and got a recording studio. So the early parts of the band was actually just kind of learning how to write together and learning how to produce a song and how to mix a song and master a song and self-produce. And when it came to this record and, you know, leaving better moments and just kind of being unsure of songwriting in general and where we wanted to go and the direction that we wanted to go, that when we kind of found our sound and direction, it just made most sense to go back to what has always made us uh, the most comfortable and the most at ease and happy to kind of be perfectionists and tweak our stuff. And self-producing has always just been a really big part of that and it probably always will be for us to some extent. A lot of what I got from working with producers in the past was just like, I mean, that, that was just an immense knowledge feast of learning how to make how to make songs better and that and all the all the things that go into that and I think at least to me too like there is a certain I guess there's a certain cap where like you can only learn so much from the teacher at a time and we gotta let ourselves loose again and uh, see what we can do with everything we've learned and I think that was particularly useful in these such like so when we were doing better moments we were on such a time crunch and we were like a lot like we toured so much in those 
two years of like before and after that that there was just like a and there, there wasn't enough time to see that record through to where I think we all wanted to spend more time on it and just because of the crazy schedule we had to keep we couldn't whereas this one we wrapped up that gold edition album cycle and we're like okay it's time to write and we did have tour plans booked but then the pandemic hit too and we just had all the time we needed to just sit with these and make it good and I think that that really was everything and we also we wouldn't have gotten that with a producer either even even the pandemic whether it was there or not like if we were working with a producer we would have had two and a half weeks to a month to churn out those songs whereas we got half a year to do this and it was everything we needed to just sit and digest these make those tweaks and I I'm very happy with what we got out of that Previously with Thank You and Goodbye and, and a large majority of our older material was self-produced so it was what I was used to when I was coming back into this. You know, a few songs we had worked with Johnny Frank before, but I had left before the band went and worked with Andrew Wade so I am definitely bummed that I didn't have that whole experience because I'm sure it would be really eye-opening into working with you know, such a great producer at a you know, major facility that would add a lot, I think, that I wouldn't otherwise learn or know. But with Distance, I know that it really helped kind of craft everything into what we all wanted the band to be. And the fact that we have the tools to do it um, and really sit and dissect everything and have someone like Mike who can mix it and engineer it and everything that you know, it's not sounding like it's coming out of your garage. You know, we all we all had a lot of faith that it was going to end up sounding exactly as we wanted. Not just focusing on self-producing, but there's always the side of that that I'm focused on the actual recording process and the mixing and the mastering and getting all this stuff set up because it's at some point I kind of have to turn off the writing sense of my brain once all the parts are recorded and get into, you know, like mixer mode and just start really fine detailing like the sound that I've always been hearing in my head for the new record. So Distance was the first one that Mike sent to me, um, you know, when, when he had first, I think it was that morning that he texted me asking if I wanted to come back and write the drums for the new album. It's such a cool song because it it's a great opening for the album. You know, it's it's not coming out swinging. It's kind of easing people into you know the redirection of the sound and having that song as the lead single and you know title track and first song on the album. I think fits it absolutely perfectly. It's the first song that really I think marked that. Okay, we are writing this album. I think they got together a little earlier in the day and then I wound up there. So there was a few things already. I know there we were still in that first like intro, like the really just sag clean guitars and that and. I think we were still messing with some chord things and that and I remember the last, particularly the last chord in that progression that like cycles it back through before the repeat that you hear like I was listening to Coldplay on the way up there and I was like alright let's just like make this sound like one of those real sad Coldplay things here and so we finished that session and then a few days later I had to go away to visit family in Canada and you guys actually, I think uh, you guys finished that song without me there and um, Mama actually wrote a lot of the leads there and it's, I remember when I came back in and listened to that I was like, this sounds like I like would have done this so kudos, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> like especially just like those like dissonant and things like the like that, that's like, I'm all about that kind of a thing. I love it. That song made me fall in love with my band again. It's everything I've ever wanted to write. I feel incredibly lucky to be a part of a song like that with a message that was deep and real that I think a lot of people um, can relate to on a very, very intimate level. Uh, the lyrics are beautifully written. I even pitched the idea when we were talking about music video ideas for, for Distance pitched the idea because I thought the lyrics were so beautifully written, I, I thought about, you know, maybe having them subtitled at the bottom. Uh, Mike is a poet and did a wonderful job conveying deep, real emotion with that song, taking people back to a place of where they've already been or maybe they have not been before, but that was, that was real, that was honesty. It's just a, the ultimate culmination of who Boys of Fall is, is song distance. It was important for us when releasing the record. We had released another single prior to the actual release of the record, but Distance became the title track song, and it just felt like if people didn't get that song, they weren't going to get the rest of the record. 
it has all the parts about this band that we love and that it seems like other people love about us and it's all jam-packed into one song that just opens the record with this big emotional hit. You'll notice through this entire documentary that a lot of these are, you know, playthrough style videos, but distance the music video and then into midnight. It was very important for us to just kind of tell the story of Hurt and do it in a very poetic and almost like notebook filmed way. Just being able to film those and get it all put together. Uh, you know, Distance was the perfect example. And going into Midnight, Midnight got to show the aftermath of these kind of like feelings and what it makes you feel and the, the giving up on yourself and the loneliness. And you know, we're so happy with how the videos turned out. We're so happy with how the songs turned out. You know, it was really important to put Distance and Midnight together because they just flow into each other and they kind of tell the story of the emotion of the whole album. And it was important for our fans and any of the listeners to hear those first to kind of understand where this record is going. I just feel like I'm losing you. Well, God, is this real? Does your heart yard for one that could deal with the mess, the anxiety, the stress I guess built inside my chest? I feel I'll lay you down. You call my bluff, mistakes away and happy. God, I've had enough. I'm sick of drowning, coppers really catching up Staring at these ceilings won't fix these real feelings that are haunting us Let you go, drift away into nothing Cause I don't know you, I don't know you now Losing touch
I think one of the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that I've learned in the last couple of years is just, you know, just to, to trust our gut, and I, I think that our hearts tell us certain things for certain reasons. You don't, you don't get these years back. There's not a textbook that tells you, you know, the correct way to, to live your life, and the correct way to go about chasing your dreams. All you, all you have is your, your intuition and your brain and your heart and your friends. In our case, like we've got our fans. You know, it's such a broad question. What have I learned? I just, just to trust my heart, trust my gut. I think, I hope everything else will take care of itself. Being a full-time musician isn't easy and we love doing it. We got just beat up for like the two years that we toured hard, man. A lot of shit happened in our relationships, in our families, personal lives, career finances. So. Something that was special about Thank You and Goodbye is that we connected to a lot of people in, in, in the way we struggle and the way we have traumas. And so this album was definitely sparked by more like the shit we went through. It's such it's such a long amount of time, but it's also such a short amount of time. Like I think, like I, I sometimes I feel like I just joined, but but also I feel like I've always been here, kind of a thing. <laughs> really interesting and crazy to me, just like everything we've gone through. But also it's only been three years, but it's a lifetime worth of stories, emotions and feelings and developing friendships with like just becoming just best friends with everyone in Boy the Fall and two years. Um such a long but short time because it's crazy to see what can happen in just two years alone. Two years describes our entire cycle of better moments. All the touring that we did, all the places that we got to go and see, and that feels like a lifetime. But then at the same time you think about it, and I've been in this band for 10 years, so two years just seems like such a small amount of that. But it's crazy to see what can happen. From the start of this band to where we are now, I've been so thankful of the response. I've been so thankful of the things that I've got to experience and do. And everything about this band has just given me so much joy, has given me the best and the worst parts of my life. I will forever be thankful for that. Focus on the art because that's that's what's most important. At the end of 2019, I started having like health issues that caused some weird mental health issues that tied into my childhood hero, Kobe Bryant. He died, and then shortly after that, the pandemic started. And it just all kind of made me think for a minute, like, in the drop of a hat, everything and anything can change. And what have I done as a person to leave a legacy? Um, because that, when you go, you know, when, when any of our time is up and we don't know when it is, you don't know. And that's the reality. That's the only thing that's guaranteed in life. And I remember going into this album cycle, and I know that I said it before, but, but it really kind of hit me. Did we do enough to leave a legacy? Did we leave a legacy? What is our legacy? What did we say? What did we do? What lives did we impact? What was the message that we portrayed? What did I learn in the last few years? It's that, you know, do your best to spend the time that you have here with value and with people that you love, doing things that you love because you tomorrow might not come. Uh, a lot of these songs, at least for me, were written about, you know, not necessarily the circumstances portrayed in our music videos, but 
you know, struggles in relationships and heartbreak, defeat, whether it's career or in a relationship, it's real. It's real. And I think people connect with that because somebody somewhere needs to know that they're not alone in feeling like that. And people, this is a natural part of life, you know? You know, distance was an accumulation of what we learned over two years and how we feel as people after two years and the people that we want to be. We all learned so much about ourselves during that time and we learned a lot about being a musician and being a musician on the road. We learned how to write songs and really focus on the details of the songs and how to release a record and all that is crazy because we learned most of what we've now done in our career in just such a short amount of time. And I'm so thankful for it and I'm just excited to watch it continue. <laughs> it's, it's so wild to <laughs> me. In that third of time, like we've churned out and done like more than we ever have. I'd say that's just like one of the biggest things that like I've just experienced in that is just like the way that you can think about time and how it's it's just what you make of it. And a second thing I've learned is that uh, Jameson is superior to Jack Daniels. <laughs>
Britain, also known as Bean or Bin or any variation of the sort. Um, you know, thanks to everyone who's who's been supporting the singles and you know previous albums and has gotten us to this point. Um, I'm really really honored to be back in working on this project after you know after taking the break between thank you and goodbye and now i think it's it's a really special project and and it means a lot to me that that these guys thought of me when um you know when they needed the drums on the album done so it's we're, we're all really really proud of it and you know really can't wait for everyone to get their hands on it by the time we knew it we finished the album and here we are now making a documentary for the album so that we can see we can interact with you guys and not just be hermits i'm jake that was my shit th th thank you it's it's been such a wild ride over the last three years of being in boys of fall to get to here i've had the best times of my life and especially to the fans uh coming in as you know a, a not a non-original member um I'm so very thankful and grateful that everyone enjoys the music that we have been doing and has given me that chance just like everyone in the band has given me that chance and it, it means the world to me. I'm Eli, I'm with Boys of Fall, I play bass, I've been here a long time and <laughs> I have, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a really long road. I'm very thankful to have written this record for all of you at this point in our in, in all of our lives. I hope it's I hope it's a bright spot of 2020. It's been very rough for all of us. You guys give me a reason to wake up in the morning, give meaning and purpose to my life and and the rest of the guys uh, in our band. We wouldn't have a career if it weren't for all of you. This one is for you. This one is for the fans, uh, especially the ones that have stuck by us. We hear you, and this one's for you. To all the people that have ever come out to a show, uh, to all the people that have shared laughs and cries and screaming with each other at all the venues across the world. Nah, I shouldn't say world because we haven't gone across the world, but we have gone a lot of places in the world. Either way, I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the kind words, especially on all the singles that we've just released. You know, it means more to me than I can ever express into words. Uh, this band has always been one of the happiest parts of my life because I've got to experience so much with it. I hope that you enjoyed this documentary. You learned a little bit about us. I hope that you're excited for the new album. I hope that during all of this, I hope you find a little bit of, you know, a little bit of brightness in your day watching this. Thank you. Thank you to our team of people, uh, Mark, Nick, Priscilla. I, I mean, everybody. Thank you to everybody who's ever been there for us. We appreciate you. We love you. This record is for you. Try to understand the way this all
Hey man, do you like Creed?